worst impacts of this storm, but we're still going to see some impacts and it's crucial that folks uh, listen to any sort of messaging or, or warnings that are put out and uh, stay at home, stay hunkered down. If you haven't uh, you know, made arrangements to go someplace else or, or finished your, your preparations, you need to be done with those right now because we're about to get into uh, the start of this. And again, uh, don't put our first responders at risk. If you, you know, aren't listening to what's being told to you, this guidance, uh, and someone has to come out and rescue you, you're putting other lives at risk in addition to your own. Um, Lafayette Mayor President Josh Guillory uh, went around the entire parish today. He spoke with police chiefs in the municipalities, with the mayors, uh, to ensure that everyone was prepared and ready. Uh, they are. They have everything they need in place. Uh, preparing for the worst, hoping for the best. Uh, LUS, um, we've got thousands of mutual aid crews and expert rescue volunteers that have descended upon Lafayette. They're based right here in Lafayette and they're going to provide assistance both here and in surrounding parishes. So um, unfortunately Lafayette's in a position where uh, we can be sort of a staging area for those uh, teams to dispatch from and they can kind of still ride out the storm and be somewhat safe and protect their equipment. Uh, again we've got teams from uh, cities throughout the state as far as North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee. Uh, they've got airboats, uh, water rescue boats, water rescue vehicles, um, all sorts of um, different tools at their disposal. Uh, and the Sheriff's Department as well uh, is on standby to provide water rescue assistance if need be, either here in the parish or uh, elsewhere uh, in our neighboring parishes who are uh, probably going to take a, a pretty serious blow from this and we want them to know that we support them and we'll be here to support them as much as we can throughout this process. Um, here in Lafayette, the Vermilion uh, Street at Surrey, um, last word I got was uh, at around six feet. Uh, it's expected to reach about 13 feet. Uh, the latest reports I saw, um, that is a minor flood level. Um, right now, there's not a lot of alarm as far as uh, significant flooding. We could see saltwater intrusion as far up as Lafayette, but we're not gonna see any of the, the intrusion that we're seeing south of here, uh, like in Vermilion Parish, St. Mary, and uh, Cameron Parishes. A uh, big thank you to our first responders. Uh, they've been working around the clock to prepare to ensure our citizens are safe. Uh, they'll be here around the clock in case uh, anything happens, uh, in case things go uh, a little worse than we expected. Uh, once Again, once winds increase, remember ambulance service won't be running until possibly 8 or 10 p.m. We could see those hurricane force winds, uh, wind gusts. We may not see hurricane force sustained winds, but some areas, um, maybe in the western parts of the parish, could see um, some of those gusts in excess of, of 70, 80 miles per hour. So we need to be prepared for that. Uh, and again, I'll remind everyone, dial 211 for resources or info. That is non-emergency. Uh, if you want information about um, resources, uh, places you can possibly uh, get food or, or mostly post-storm stuff. Uh, you can dial 311, option one, if you want to report a power outage with LUS or uh, issues with your water service. Option two, if your fiber goes out, LUS fiber. Uh, I know originally we had said dial option three and it will route you to um, a line to report water in the roadways. Uh, in fact, the number you call if there's flooding, if you see uh, roads starting to flood or your home is starting to flood, dial 911 and they will uh, respond accordingly. Also, if you do have damage post-storm, we encourage you to go to the Lafayette OSAP, uh, OSEP rather, uh, webpage. There, there's a disaster. Um, questionnaire form to fill out. It's important that you fill that out so that you're in the database, your uh, information gets sent through FEMA and that also helps us get that FEMA declaration sooner. So we need people to do that as soon as they possibly can. We also put some information out earlier about what to do with storm debris. Uh, again, it's important that if you do have storm debris, you separate it by type. You can find all that information on our Facebook page, Lafayette uh, Consolidated Government on Facebook. Uh, some very important information as far as how to properly put that material, that debris out uh, for pickup. So with that said, do you all have any questions? Would you say that um, with the curfew in effect, that if people haven't evacuated now, then just stay in their homes That's correct. throughout the night? Right. I mean, the assumption is if you haven't evacuated at this point, you feel that, you, you know, your you're dwelling, you're, wherever you're staying is safe enough. Um, is getting to be a little late to have second thoughts about that. So again, uh, try to stay where you are. Only leave if there's an emergency. 
And when should we expect emergency vehicles to stop responding? Emergency vehicles won't stop responding. Uh, ambulances, uh, once wind gets to a certain um, strength, because of the profile of the vehicle, um, it just makes it unsafe. So um, again, we're still gonna provide emergency services. It's just that uh, ambulance service may not get ambulance service for some time. But again, we will have the fire department uh, go out and respond to those emergency calls, to those uh, medical emergency calls. Could you further expound on why it's important for people to stay inside so that the emergency responders can do their job? Yeah, uh, because the more people we have out and about and the more people that get themselves in a bind, uh, that's the more resources we have to, to use to help those folks. You know, if, if enough people decide that they're going to can stay where they are and they, they end up in danger, well, there's going to be a point where if enough people do that, we may not have the resources available to, to help everyone as we need to. And also, it also puts a strain on our, our first responders. We want to make sure that, you know, we're not working them to the max to where they're working around the clock and not able to get rest or, you know, get those breaks in there. So, again, if, if we don't have to put someone in, and quite frankly, it puts their lives in danger. And our goal is to not put anyone's lives in danger, including our citizens, which is why we ask them to stay inside and make sure that they're making the right decision. Screaming, at first, we were, or at least most recently, we were looking at the heavy wind starting in the next couple of hours and rain accumulating mostly throughout the day tomorrow. Is there any change in the timing of the storm so far? Uh, from what I understand, um, we are going to start seeing those winds increase a good bit over the next few hours with landfall still projected around 1 a.m. Um, those sustained trop strong tropical storm force winds will continue through the overnight hours until about maybe 8 or 9 in the morning. Uh, rains, you know, again with these storms, it's almost kind of a wait and see. Um, rains hopefully should be winding down uh, by midday, early afternoon. But again, um, from what I understand, latest forecasts I've seen, we could be expecting rain for the next few days. So um, again, not going to make anything uh, very easy when it comes to having to clean up. How have your emergency preparedness plans changed because of the coronavirus? Um, what changes have you all have to make? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, our folks are going to take every precaution that they can, uh, but given the circumstances. Um, it's hard to kind of social distance when you're trying to save someone's life, but they're going to take all the necessary steps that they can to, to ensure that um, they're protecting themselves and, and the patients. But, uh, you know, when it comes down to it, the, the primary uh, goal is to save lives, and uh, they'll continue to do that. Any plans, like, in terms of sheltering, should that be necessary, like social distancing in that situation? We don't have any plans at this point um, as far as opening a shelter. Um, it's very difficult, as I'm sure you're aware, to open shelters at this time because of social distancing and, um, you know, COVID-19. Uh, again, that's something that we're assessing as we go along. If down the road, uh, you know, something like that comes up, we'll, we'll address it then. But at this time, there are no plans to open a shelter. You said the Vermilion River forecast has us in a moderately safe place with milder flooding there. Mm -hmm. Are we concerned because of the storm surge in more southerly parishes that our coolies may have a harder time dealing with it than the river will? I'll tell you that, um, you know, we've been working very hard to make sure that our coolies are in, you know, the best possible shape that they can be. In fact, uh, Mayor President Guillory, uh, hurricane or not, from day one was determined to ensure that we start uh, really cleaning out our drainage system. Um, right now, uh, there are no extreme concerns. However, again, with these storms, we never know exactly what's going to happen. So we need to be prepared for anything. And we are prepared at this point to respond if something like that were to happen. All right, any other questions? You know when you might next uh, give people an update of the situation? Uh, we... We're going to aim for possibly somewhere between um, 10 p.m. and landfall. I'll update you guys to make sure you're aware, um, and we'll continue to push out information as we get it. But until the storm kind of starts ramping up, um, we won't have any new information until then. So uh, as soon as we do, I'll make sure that you guys are notified. So, How frequently are you guys 
getting in touch with the weather service in Lake Charles? Are they I mean, every are they two still, hours? Are they they're still operating down there? They are not. Um, well, National Weather Service. That update Charles. from LCG. Jamie Angel, the communications director, updating us on conditions in Lafayette Parish and expectations as we go into the night and into tomorrow. Well, let's get a check of the, the latest with Hurricane Laura now. Chief Meteorologist Rob Perillo standing by. Hey, Rob. Hey, guys and boy, this is uh, one whopper of a hurricane here by every metric we've been watching this afternoon and into this evening and still concerning that we continue to see lightning going on on the eastern part of the eye wall. Uh, last couple of passes, uh, the hurricane uh, looking like the pressure continues to drop a little bit, although it may not be, uh, you may not have a perfect donut around here. Uh, this is getting more and more intense and notice uh, during the course, although this is moving away from us in this particular angle, it looks like the eye is constricting just a little bit. I haven't seen the latest uh, uh, vortex message to see the eye diameter, but we've been in the 20 mile range, uh, maybe closer to 18 or 17 miles now. And we open it on up and here are some of the gusts that I just plotted up. Uh, still 37 uh, down at Calcasieu Pass, Lake Charles at 36 mile an hour winds, Pecan Island 36. Uh, we get down to Freshwater City, 50. Uh, the uh, water kind of leveling off for right now, uh, four or five feet above normal. Uh, but we have this mound of water that is right about here. That's going to be coming in, and that's the storm surge. As uh, this storm gets into the shallower coastal waters of Louisiana, now mind you, you get within five miles, you can uh, essentially, you're still in 10 feet of water five miles offshore, so that's when the storm surge is going to be piling up, and that is going to start soon, so we'll be watching those tidal gauges. Out here, the only buoy that uh, is observing that we're keeping an eye on, reporting about a 77 mile an hour gust in these outer rain bands. And this is what we can expect with some of the outer rain bands inland. Uh, although over water, there's less friction inland. There's more friction, but that could add to the gustiness factor as well. And we see those tropical rain bands beginning to edge into uh, Cameron, into uh, Vermilion Parish. Uh, not much going on uh, farther north, but uh, again, some of these tropical showers uh, beginning to come in. But the wind's still not too bad out there. They're in the 10, 15 mile an hour range for most of us this evening so far. But again, as this, uh, this particular area works its way inland, I am sure the wind is coming up at Forkett Island, back through Grand Chenier right now. And this is where the winds begin to pick up and you go from a relatively quiet evening with the crickets outside to uh, it gets awfully quiet uh, and again with the cold cloud tops remember I was showing you that the lightning was really cooking in the eastern eye it'll be interesting to see if these cold cloud tops here uh, this magenta the lighter shade of magenta is minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit very cold cloud tops as you go into the top of the storm so uh, this is roughly at about 55,000 feet or so uh, so we'll see if uh, this purple surrounds the storm or not but uh, you can see it doesn't take a scientists to tell you this is heading straight pretty much for Cameron uh, the way it looks like on this map as we kind of zoom in and look at the latitude and the longitude lines it's still moving north northwest that's uh, uh, pretty much the forecast track we've seen some wobbles uh, to the north and now maybe a little bit more of a wobble to the northwest on the last few frames but uh, current conditions this was the eight o'clock bulletin I think we're going to get another one coming up in nine 150 mile an hour winds pressure at 937 but we just saw a couple of 930 35s, 936s coming in from the Hurricane Hunter. So uh, it isn't weakening. It's at least maintaining and 150 mile per hour sustained winds gust to 175, uh, certainly uh, in the realm of possibility. And this model quite hasn't updated yet. Uh, we'll be getting uh, fresh model runs on this coming up probably in the next half hour, 45 minutes. Uh, but this looks very realistic again with the landfall right near Cameron, maybe a little bit east of where we're going to see the landfall. But uh, as we get to uh, it looks like right around 11 o'clock midnight tonight. That's when conditions will worsen across all of Acadiana and will be life threatening as you get farther to the south and west over toward Cameron Parish and certainly into Calcasieu Parish. It's going to be a rough go of it uh, through the wee morning hours of this Thursday morning as the storm gradually works its way on through and then those outer tropical rain bands uh, will begin to cause problems with respect to uh, winds blowing down trees, uh, blowing tree branches down, sporadic power outages, uh, sporadic power surges, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, prepare for that because that is coming later on tonight and that is 100% guarantee coming from the weather lab and we don't usually do guarantees, but this is the type of uh, situation where it's looking like it's going to be a very, very rough night ahead. Guys.
Davis. Thanks, oh. Rob. Next up tonight, we want to take a look at these images taken from the International Space Station today. They were taken today by astronaut Chris Cassidy, who's currently living on the station. He wrote views of Hurricane Laura taken from the space station today. Stay safe everyone to say the very least as we look at that from the international space station mm -hmm. beautiful from that perspective from that not, perspective yeah, yeah but when you that think that we're right down there and that we're under that way yeah yeah different story there mm -hmm. let's head out live to new orleans now a uh, view of the crescent city tonight looks like a beautiful night uh, in New Orleans. Uh, New Orleans kind of on the outskirts of uh, the impacts expected from the hurricane. Folks in New Orleans were bracing for Marco just mm -hmm. a few days ago, thinking they would be heavily impacted by the storm that was Marco, as we as we should call it. But they were spared with that one, and it looks like New Orleans is in going to be okay. I bet a lot of folks from Acadiana, though, might have headed that way. Headed to New Orleans. Not a bad place to be if you know you're going to be absolutely safe uh, in the midst of it all. Okay, the Texas coast also feeling Laura's impacts. This video from uh, Texas there, the storm is still hours away from landfall, but as you can see there, water levels, well, the water's pretty choppy for sure off the coast. Uh, the water will continue to rise though uh, throughout the night. And then 60 miles away from where this video was taken in Houston, officials are urging residents not to let down their guards. We will avoid a direct hit, but that doesn't mean that we're avoiding potential consequences like power outages or the impacts of wind. The impacts again, not just here in Louisiana, Texas as well. That's right. We are, you know, we, we keep continuing to talk about our area, of course, but with many people here have loved ones who live just across the border right there in, in Texas. Um, they will be feeling the brunt of this as well. Mm -hmm. We did um, hear from uh, Lafayette Consolidated Government mm -hmm. a little earlier um, in this uh, half hour, um, around 8.15 or so. LCG had said that there were no big plans to open shelters at this, at this point, but they are monitoring the storm. And a big uh, portion of the preparations here, Marcel's with LUS. That's right, LUS, so many preparations in place. As we know, power outages will be one of the major concerns and one of the major effects of Hurricane Laura as this storm continues to push to push inward, uh, LUS preparing and getting ready for when things are safe to get back out and restore mm -hmm. power in the areas as soon as they can. When it is, again, emergency responders have to protect themselves as well at the height of the storm, and then they can go out and do the work that they do for all yeah, of us. Yeah, LUS saying too, they had thousands of resources available, ready to go just in case, uh, you know, when in the, when the issue happens, when power does become an issue, uh, and power outages, they want to have all the crews ready to uh, assist. And as we've heard throughout the day, we have had crews coming and on standby in neighboring states as well, ready to send to Louisiana, to the areas hardest hit by Hurricane Laura. And don't forget, everybody, when you do lose power, or perhaps if you're out of town, we are streaming. Uh, our newscast will be staying on air as long as we need to and as long as we can. So charge up those devices, those mobile devices, your iPhone, your your tablets are going to be very important um, in the days ahead because, you know, power might be an issue. And Marcel, look at this, the I-10 bridge. Yeah, I-10 bridge in Lake Charles. We looked at it a little while ago um, at the latter part of the evening, a couple hours ago. We were noticing the changes there and that camera, you know, swaying backwards and forwards and the waves. You can't see the water at this point because of nightfall, but that's the I-10 bridge in Lake Charles. Um, cars still moving out there. Things you know, traffic seemed to be moving really slow. Not many people on the roads, as it was expected in mm -hmm. some cases, that there would be lots of traffic, lots of people leaving. But that's not the place you want to go anyway. If yeah. you are planning to evacuate, heading that way is definitely um, not suggested and something you should not do. But there is still a little movement there on the I-10 bridge in Lake Charles, a bridge many people think of and are fearful of just in general circumstances. And here we are in the face of Hurricane Laura. It'll be interesting to see um, what that bridge and surrounding areas mm -hmm. will look like tomorrow during the day as day breaks and things start to quiet down some. Our Chris Welty is there in Lake Charles. They are staying safe. Our crew there, we made sure that they are safe and on the inside of the hotel that they are, are staying in and they'll be bringing us what yeah. we need to know as long as they can um, throughout the night and into tomorrow. Chris and Blake, our team that, that's out there in Lake Charles, they were on the move a little bit earlier today. We saw them right on the lakefront, 
Uh, then they were out and about uh, checking on uh, just some of the damage reports, and they were at a gas station that was kind of boarded up, taped up, really. It was the, interesting the to the see those gas pumps up. that were actually wrapped up um, at that gas station they were at earlier, and that's just a safety measure that was taken at that station. And they said they saw many others in the area that had done the same as well. And we're going to check in with uh, Chris uh, throughout the night, just as long as it's safe to do so. That's the big thing right now is that here we are, 830, uh, just a few hours away from landfall. Uh, as long as it's safe for us to be checking in on our crews, we're going to be doing that. Um, but right now, uh, Chris, they've, they've sort of receded to their hotel. Uh, mm -hmm. They're on the third uh, floor. They're on the third floor of one of the hotels there, and uh, they, they're trying to stay safe. Uh, they, they have an interior room that they're going to be getting into um, once the winds pick up, just in case there is uh, any damage. Uh, Chris and Blake filed this report earlier today. We locking her down, man, getting ready. It ain't the first one, it won't be the last one. Ricky Whaley and his family are boarding up, but not getting out. He has rode out the last three storms here at home. Have they been pretty bad? You're like a freight train roaring for a few hours. Yeah, it's it kind of nerve wracking. During the last storm, Whaley's roof was torn off, but he says he's prepared. Plus, his son lives next door, daughter is down the street, and his mom is a block over. You know, mama ain't leaving, so Rock ain't leave her. We're just hunkering down right here. Whaley is most concerned about storm surge, where he could see up to nine feet of water. <laughs> Gotta leave a peephole. He says once the lake fills up, the water has nowhere to go. God bless us and everybody that's hanging here. But eight. All right, our Chris Welty reporting there uh, from Lake Charles on the preparations that were underway. Uh, we do want to take another live look at the I-10 bridge in Calcasieu Parish. We do want to report something that is out there on social media. In an interview with WWL Radio tonight, Governor Edwards had said that uh, the state is in the process or is working to shut down I-10 from the Basin Bridge past this bridge, the Calcasieu Parish Bridge, all the way into Texas, into a portion of Texas, Marcel, because they are expecting flooding on those portions of the interstate. Yeah, the governor mentioned that on that radio interview earlier this evening. We are talking to state police in our mm -hmm. area to figure out the logistics of all of that. If there's a timetable, um, is that in the process of happening? How soon? How late? What we need to know. So we are, our crews are on the phones with yeah. state police here working to get the specifics of what the governor mentioned on that WWL radio program earlier. You know, we mentioned um, our crews being out and about in this area, and we have people in Acadia, Vermilion, um, um, Lafayette, Lake Charles. They're spread out throughout Acadiana, and you know, people often comment on seeing reporters out in the hurricane force winds and and the being blown away by the wind. Yes, it is our job to make to bring you what's happening now as it is happening. But also, we know when enough is enough. We have advisories, of course. Things will uh, come in, and Rob will tell us, hey, enough is enough. Get the crews to safety. So you might see some of that, but just know that we do take our crews off of the roadways, off of the streets, out of the areas where they need to be and have them hunker down, just like everyone else in Acadiana is doing at home. Yeah, no heroics out there by mm -mm. any means. We want to get you guys the information that you all need to know as soon as we can. Um, and let's, uh, speaking of information, Rob has been just sort of analyzing everything coming in. Uh, we're going to check back in with Chief Meteorologist Rob Perillo tracking Laura. Yeah, I have my alarm going off for the times I need to leave my home and eat dinner, you know, from come back from dinner and stuff like that. Uh, very interesting time here when we're doing continuous coverage. But here we go with the storm and we continue to see a lightning showing up on the eastern side of this eye wall. And as we've been looking at, we're starting to catch some uh, uh, winds here that offshore. These are just a few buoys and uh, the, uh, uh, the marine gauges, the tide gauges that are showing 50, 70 mile an hour winds. I don't know, if, uh, Bradley, do you have one ready here just to take a look at the uh, velocity? We do have that up on max two. Just to give you an idea, we're starting to get in radar shot as we go to our other uh, max two weather source. You got something ready there? Yeah, uh, look at this. Uh, we have uh, some of these uh, wind gusts now. Let me make sure I get this and I can actually move this a little bit. I should be able to or, or try to move the storm tracker, but I can't. Uh, but Bradley's posted. Uh, this is what the Doppler, this is a 
a velocity product right here. Yeah, you don't want to move it uh, because that kind of takes away. But as you move it, notice the numbers change on this one query that we have here. Uh, but uh, the bottom line, 100 mile an hour winds are not far offshore in the cloud level. You know, that's when uh, the Doppler again is not on the ground, but it's shooting up into the air. Notice that 114 showing up right here that Bradley's uh, posting and minus 114. That means it's coming toward the Doppler. The red means it's going away. So uh, this is what we're seeing on the northwestern side of uh, the uh, do, uh, of uh, the Hurricane Laura now. And you can see how the numbers change as the imagery just changed. Uh, our queries change as well. So that's something that we'll be looking at and getting more involved with as we get uh, these rain bands beginning to move inland. So let's go back to the other computer and uh, Bradley's got minus 51 over Lafayette. So the winds and you know the Doppler from Lake Charles to Lafayette is shooting about 5,000 feet up so the winds are being beginning to pick up aloft and uh, when do you see some of those winds working their way down to the ground well when you start seeing these rain bands move into the area and so far we don't have anything that's going to tap into that notice this rain band kind of fell apart but it is moving at a good clip from the southeast to the northwest and uh, now we're starting to see a little bit more action on the coastline by the way cloud to ground lightning strikes this is uh, where you're going to to see uh, not only thunder and lightning, uh, but that is indicating uh, to us very heavy rainfall and uh, more tropical dynamics. So you're going to have gusty winds. The winds beginning to come up. So this is right by the Pecan Island area here. Uh, we'll kind of zoom on in if I can and uh, get you in a little bit closer here and uh, show you uh, where that lightning's coming in right now and get even. This is Forkett Island just to the north. Uh, this is Chenier Antigue, Pecan Island right here. So uh, we're starting to see uh, some of these uh, more intense rain bands uh, beginning to work their way uh, right along the coast this evening. Uh, we'll move it along here and uh, move it over toward the North Island area, starting to see some of these rain bands coming in. And uh, farther to the north and west, Creole starting to see uh, some pretty heavy rain bands coming in. This is a pretty long loop here, but you can see uh, the tropical rain bands beginning their work their way into Cameron. And right now it looks like somewhere between Holly Beach, Cameron, and Creole is going to be ground zero, Gra Grand Chenier. All of these communities are going to be taking incredibly incredibly tough winds that are uh, in the offing uh, just just offshore right now and again we can see a couple of other tornado watches off to the north and east of us uh, going into Mississippi but right now uh, no warnings going and that is the good news for us Here's a satellite imagery. Just took a look at the Hurricane Hunter, and the Hurricane Hunter's right about out here. It's uh, fixing to go back to the north and west and cross this eye. But boy, this is a good looking eye here. It's a very concentric for the most part. But uh, as soon as this convection starts interacting with land, it's still offshore. Uh, we're looking at a kind of a tilted angle, so we, we have a little parallel parallax uh, uh, view, but I like this view because it shows everything in three dimensions. Now, mind you, here's your stadium effect where right down here, it's um, the cloud decks uh, maybe at about 500, 1,000 feet, and right up here, it's at 55,000 feet, and that's the stadium effect when uh, those hurricane hunters go in and out of these storms. You see these clouds piling up, and it looks like a stadium. It looks like uh, the old-fashioned Roman Colosseum where uh, you have that stadium look to uh, the eye, and uh, uh, boy, I'd love to fly one of these one of these days, but I can't fly these because normally that means it's a threat somewhere along the Gulf Coast, including Acadiana. So this is what we have as of 8 o'clock, 150 mile per hour winds, pressure at 937. And again, I've seen a couple of uh, pressure readings at 935, 936 in the last 20 minutes or so. So uh, we'll have the 9 o'clock update coming out shortly, so we'll update you then. Uh, forecast track still into Cameron Parish, maybe not this far west, but uh, this is the time when you throw throw out the cone and the track and you just deal with what you see on the radar and uh, with respect to uh, uh, some of the stronger uh, winds. Here's the uh, what we have going on and uh, this is what uh, the graph model has been showing us. It's been very consistent and this looks like it's going to verify very close in uh, many different aspects and the tropical rain bands that are going to be going out off to these. Bradley, you got something over there. I, I do see you getting ready to go just issued a tornado warning here uh, for southeastern Cameron Parish and southwestern Vermilion Parish okay. as some of those bands start to move in. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, there it is. Kind of yeah, yeah, there's this, uh, there's right here. That's that squall that we we're talking about and I was wondering about that line. I, I 
think I saw, but I, I thought it was just an extension of this is the tornado watch, that thicker line. So uh, this is the uh, tornado warning right now, and this is what we're going to have uh, for the rest of the night. Uh, these uh, tornado warnings, that's the, the warning area right there, and these are going to be flying left and right. And, you know, it's hard for us to kind of track any individual tornado, but uh, we'll go ahead and see if we can see something on the velocity data. And, yeah, you're seeing something right here. You see that little pin right there? Uh, that could be a, definitely a little bit of a spin up just offshore. So that's probably moving inland. So uh, uh, we'll take a look at that. And Bradley will take a look at that on his computer. And uh, that's how we're going to operate tonight. We're going to uh, have two people going uh, during the course of the night and tracking these storms, uh, these individual storms that are associated with the hurricane. But uh, uh, certainly we're going to see more tornado warnings. And what you want to do, if you haven't downloaded uh, for your smartphone the KATC weather app, it's sometimes listed as K KATC WX, but I think if you look it up on your app, it's KTC weather. It'll give you uh, those severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings right to your phone. It shows you exactly. We have our computer here. We have one computer here that is designed specifically to take that warning data, shoot it out to social media. If you got Twitter, subscribe to our Twitter feed, uh, and it goes to our Facebook pages as well, but you can get it straight to your phone, that information, and it gets to you more more directly and if you have and this is just a warning if you have the sound turned up you get to hear my voice announce that there's a tornado warning for your location but uh, uh, that's a uh, part of the app and part of the world that we live in we're everywhere that's KTC's slogan we're everywhere and we're even on your phone as well but it, it is very handy especially when you get under those tornado warnings and you'll be able to evaluate the tornado at your location faster than I could probably get to it uh, when we're on the air here and going uh, non-stop on the storm. Uh, so here we go. Let's take a look, uh, see if we have uh, any new information. The storm surge here is, is going to be horrendous. I checked uh, most of the gauges still at five feet. So that surge is still offshore. It's like, you know, it's coming. It's not here yet, but the water's coming up. And some of our reports that show you earlier that water was coming up uh, down by Intracoastal City, the water already covering the roadway. And I guarantee you we have water lapping over or rising over poor, uh, it all, if not a good part of Highway 82 that parallels the coast right here in Vermilion Parish, Cameron Parish, on all the way over to the Texas border and anywhere in red. We're talking nine foot inundations across the area. So it's going to be a very horrible night and uh, hopefully everybody in this red zone is out of their homes and camps. We don't want you there. I, I don't care if you're in a uh, camp that's got 18 foot pilings up above the ground. You're going to have water lapping at your home and you're going to be stuck in that water for days on end and you're not going to be able to be rescued for days on end. So hopefully you're, you've gotten out. It's not too, maybe it might, might not be too late, but now it's dark. We don't want you driving on the roadways. So please, please be careful and we pray that you've gotten out of Dodge. Uh, that's been our message all along. Again, I, I'm, I've been talking about this. I think the uh, surge levels here are way, way too low. This is just indicating three feet of water above ground level. Don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to be deeper than that. And let me get back to this graphic once again. Sorry about shifting around, but uh, I think water levels down at Sycamore Point are going to be close to 8 to 12 feet. I know uh, Andrew Clay is uh, getting to talk to uh, emergency preparedness folks down in St. Mary Parish, so we'll kind of get a first word from them coming up a little bit later on, so stay tuned for that report. As we have been talking about, here we are. It's uh, 10 minutes to 9, and uh, we do expect hurricane force conditions to be working their way in. In, in the next few hours and those uh, 100 mile an hour winds be working their way in midnight 1 2 o'clock in the morning and you can see these wind gusts uh, in the area could go as high as 80 miles an hour just about anywhere in Acadiana so we can't focus in on one particular area I'm still getting messages from folks on Facebook what is it going to be for my place right now and I can read it but I can't respond to it because what am I doing I'm here in front of the camera you don't want me to stop and just answer everybody so uh, we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. We see your questions and queries and your emails, uh, but we can't answer them back directly. So just want to make you aware of that. Uh, but we are monitoring that. And uh, one of the questions uh, was, uh, 
If the eye is bigger, is the storm stronger? If the eye is smaller, is the storm stronger? What, how does that go again? And, and let me just back it up once again to our satellite imagery because we talked about this earlier. Marcel brought it up earlier, and we'll take a look at the satellite imagery and just have this emotion. <clears throat> Uh, basically, uh, the smaller the eye generally, the faster the storm spins. And this is called conservation of angular momentum. I always kind of liken it to uh, an, uh, a figure skater on the ice. Uh, when they do one of their spins, and they start with their arms out, and then they bring their arms in, and they're spinning around a much faster. That is the law of conservation of angular momentum. And you can also do it with swivel chairs, much to the chagrin of many teachers when I've done uh, demonstrations in the schools. Uh, you know, I'll put the, one of the kids down on a chair, have their arms and legs spread out, spin them real fast, and make sure they, they've digested lunch, and then tell them to pull their arms and legs in, and then they spin around faster. So the smaller the eye generally, uh, the faster the storm is spinning. But uh, one of the comments I made earlier is that we've seen these hurricanes with 20, 25, 30 mile wide eyes that are supporting category four or five. The, uh, the, the educational background I had, a uh, storm that had maybe a 10 mile wide diameter eye, that was a Cat 5. Uh, Hurricane Camille back in 1969, Cat 5 had an eight mile diameter eye. This is a pretty good uh, size eye right here. Uh, right now, you know, eyeballing it, it's probably still in the 20 mile an hour range, maybe 18. I'll have to take a look at the latest vortex message, but uh, uh, Again, your latitude uh, to your longitude, longitude line, uh, roughly 60 miles here. So, uh, you know, we're in that 20, 25 mile range, maybe a little bit less than that. But we leave that up to the hurricane hunters to give us firsthand information. So, again, it's a storm bearing down on the uh, Cameron Parish coastline. And all of us are going to see maybe not sustained hurricane force winds. But we're going to see hurricane force gusts on and off throughout the night, depending on how these rain bands work their way around the storm as it slowly gets closer and closer to the coastline. Here we are at uh, 8.50 tonight, and I hear the printer printing out, so I'm just going to step off while you're looking at this just to see what uh, the latest bulletin is. And um, this is a 9, p a 9 p.m. update, so uh, and uh, what do we got here? 9.37 millibars. And this should plot up. I got 28.8, yep, 93.1, 150 mile per hour winds. The pressure uh, not dropping off quite yet at uh, 937 millibars. So uh, that's where we stand. We haven't seen much of a change, still moving to the north, northwest. And this is the latest advisory. And again, let me, oh, I just dropped that on the floor. Let me take a look to see if we can give you, uh, uh, where is this, uh, uh, about 90 miles. Um, south of Lake Charles and about 90 miles south southeast of Port Arthur, Texas. Uh, sustained wind of 45 was recently reported at Sippermore Point. So uh, that's where we're starting to see the actions coming and it's going to go from 45 at Sippermore Point, which is right here, to 75 gusts coming up in just a matter of hours and uh, back to the west uh, we're talking 100 plus on whatever observing sites we get and uh, unfortunately as a meteorologist you like to have a lot of observing stations we have absolutely none uh, that are going to stay up tonight uh, very little other than Lake Charles Lafayette and a few other spots that will monitor throughout the night for the latest wind gusts and, and again uh, 45 at uh, Sipper Roar Point Let's see what I had plotted up here. Um, I think a little bit earlier. Yeah, we had 40. I got 48. So um, very close to that nonetheless. So we're starting to see those winds gusting offshore, 77, and we'll get observations coming in about every 30 minutes or so. So we'll be about plotting these up as we see them and they are available to us. So uh, that's what we have going right now. I didn't know, Jim, if you had anything over there, but uh, we can... Uh, chit chat about anything you want with respect to hurricanes because it's going to be a long night ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, Rob, I think it's it's fascinating to watch you get information fresh off the printer. Off the printer. <laughs> and then analyze it live hey. on air right there. And you know, I still like paper. And, I agree. You know, uh, I mean, we have all that information that pops up on one of our 12, 13 computers over there. Uh, but you know, when I'm on the wall, I hear the printer printing and I have the I have things designed. That's how it works. Well, I hear the printer going again, so I'll let you uh, check <laughs> on that. <laughs> over there. We appreciate it. Rob will check back in in just a little bit, but first we want to head down to Vermilion Parish once again. Our Matthew Torres standing by with Vermilion Parish Sheriff Mike Cuvia. Matt. 
Uh, that's right. You know, we're feeling the uh, rain coming down. The wind is picking up. And with me is the sheriff. First off, sheriff, I know when you hear the words catastrophic, unsurvivable happening uh, with this hurricane, what's running through your mind? Do you feel you guys are prepared? You never can be fully prepared for something this terrible. However, you make do with what you got. And with the experience we have with the two previous hurricanes, Rita and Ike, we're going to give it our best shot. You are getting a lot of attention with your uh, post earlier today as far as if people choose to stay, pretty much writing their personal information on a note and leaving it in their pocket. Why say that and do you think people are heeding that warning? Well, when they say mandatory evacuation, you can't arrest them if they don't leave. So we try to encourage them to leave because all of our first responders life means a lot to me and all the other residents in Vermillion Parish. And when you don't leave and put these first responders risking their life, you need to open your eyes and think about the world and everybody else. Speaking of first responders, we have so many of your equipment out here for rescue operations. Uh, anything new at the plan? And do you guys feel like you are ready for these operations as soon as they are needed? Well, thank God for the National Guard. Thank God for the OEP office. All our first responders in Vermillion Parish, we have five staging areas throughout the parish. One in Gato, Kaplan, two in Iville, and one in Erath where we plan on dispatching these rescue units when needed. Are there any shelters available at all in this parish? Not as of yet. That would be post-storm. And so, uh, you know, you mentioned Ike and Rita in the past. Uh, you know, this hurricane is in the cusp of Category 5. Are you nervous at all in the surge, potentially even reaching it to the area where we're standing? Well, if you were flooded for Rita and Ike, and this is supposed to be a Category 5, everybody needs to be worried and concerned. Got it. Well, thank you so much for your time, and best of luck as well. They are prepared here. Again, just one of many agencies on standby as soon as rescues are needed. We'll send it back over to you. All righty, thank you, Matt. That was Matthew Torres in Vermilion Parish with Sheriff Mike Cuvia. As we mentioned, our crews are getting up-to-date information minute by minute, including our Andrew Clay, who's here behind the KTC TV3 studio. We are with Sheriff Blaze Smith of St. Mary Parish. Sheriff, I appreciate you taking a minute for us tonight. Can you describe the conditions you guys are seeing right now? Well, right now we're in a, a fall rain band. Uh, we just crossed Intercoastal Canal on Highway 317 going toward Burns Point. The lower part of it is uh, already flooded out. We're just going down there and checking some of the uh, business interests we have down there. You guys had a mandatory evacuation south of Intercoastal City. Did everyone get out? Did that go smoothly? We have uh, a mandatory evacuation south of uh, basically Highway 182 uh, that goes through St. Mary Parish. Uh, most of it is beyond or south of the Intercoastal Canal. Do you know about how many people live in that area? No, I, I really don't have an idea because at Sippermore Point, uh, we have like 100 residents, but we have several hundred people that have camps down there that also were this time of the year at the camp to evacuate. Do you remember what kind of storm surge you guys experienced back during Rita? Not during Rita, but the recent one in Barry. We had an 11-foot storm surge, which, which came in at, at high tide, which made it go a little bit higher. Okay. And this, this storm is expected to bring a lot more storm surge. What other ways are you guys preparing to handle the excess water that you guys are going to see? Well, we just have to uh, wait and see what's going to happen. And, and we have a flood protection area around most of the cities now, floodgates and so forth, that are in place. So we're just uh, hoping that all of that works. I think we have a, enough marsh or whatever to handle what's coming if it doesn't all come at one time. How have you guys adapted? You know, what, some of the things we've heard tonight from other people we've talked to is how people have adapted over the years, over the hurricanes, raising homes and so forth. How have people in St. Mary Parish adapted to being so vulnerable to a storm? Well, basically, the people down here right now, if we give an order to evacuate, we have no problem with it. it, it 
It appears we have lost connection. Sheriff, are you, do you have- Okay, I'm sorry, I said we, we have no problems uh, when it comes to evacuation with the people. Everybody usually does it, you know, at, in an orderly fashion, and they listen to what we have to tell them for the most part. What are your expectations for the next 12 to 24 hours? For the next 24 hours or so, we're anticipating watching the water, uh, high water, and making sure that uh, we can get to people if we have to. When you talk to people and are out, what are their concerns with this storm? Water. Is it the rainwater or it's just this storm surge that seems to be so it, threatening? It's the storm surge water that most people are concerned with that I've talked to. Okay. Well, I appreciate it, Sheriff. This is Sheriff Blaze Smith of St. Mary Parish. I appreciate you coming on for a minute with us. All right. Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you. Jim, Marcel. All right. Andrew Clay reporting live for us there in Lafayette. A heads up, everybody. The Department of Transportation and Development confirming that a portion of I-10 is now closed in preparation of Hurricane Laura. I-10 eastbound is being closed at the Texas-Louisiana state line. And I-10 westbound is closed just west of the Basin Bridge. Detours are listed there on your screen. The detour closure uh, detours and the closures are to avoid undrivable conditions. Many parts of the interstate expected to be underwater because of Hurricane Laura. Well, if you lose power or when you lose power, I guess we should say to get the latest information from us, go ahead and download our app if you haven't already. If you have a smart TV, you can access our newscast on Android TV, Apple TV, Fire TV, Fire Stick, and Roku. Just search KATC in your app store. We we say we're everywhere, and in this case, we are trying to be there for you. Throughout our wall-to-wall -wall coverage, you can listen to KATC on the radio as well. Tune in your radio to Talk Radio 960 AM. Again, Talk Radio 960 AM. We will be streaming our coverage there as well, and we'll be here all night as Hurricane Laura makes its way across Acadiana. And here at KATC, we are being proactive. We want to stay on the air as long as we can to bring you the information, everything you need to know with Hurricane Laura. So we are about to switch over to generator power here at the station. That's right. We know that there will be some surges tonight. Later tonight, we have two days worth of generator power here. So as Jim said, we're going to be proactive and go ahead and switch over. You're going to lose us just for a moment. It shouldn't last very long as we make the switch over to generator power. We want to guarantee that we will be here throughout the night. So we're doing so at this point. You will lose us for just a minute, but don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Um, with you with the latest information. Rob standing by. The weather team is in here. Our reporters throughout Acadiana. So we're going to you're going to lose us for a second again as we switch over and we'll be right back with you in just a little bit.